What's going on Superstorm fam and today we are going to be building our Soma. We'll look into his builds and skill sets and also I'll be discussing some of the different builds, weapons and artifacts we can use for him. And after that we'll do some team building and then showcase for Soma. Now before we jump in I just want to say that I stream on Twitch normally on Wednesday and Sunday. So if you're interested, be sure to follow me on Twitch and come hang out. Also, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more of my Genshin Impact content. And with that, let us build our Soma. Toma level 1. I don't know if I already have enough material for him, but I'll do my best to get him up to second passive talent okay we're going to be wasting so much xp again i really would love it if mihoyo had some of the extra bonus xp being moved toward the next level so it seems that we do have enough for the next ascension sorry toma i'll be skipping your dialogue and we use this good okay let's go and quickly grab some fiery stones okay we should have more than enough than we need Let's craft that. Ascend and get the second passive talent. Nice. We do. Okay. Can we get to 80? We're missing a bit of mushrooms. And two times farming the pyro cube. Okay. I'm fine with leaving Toma at level 70 for now. Because second passive talent is already good. Okay. Next phase weapons. I guess we'll be borrowing Zhongli's Skyward Spine for now. Skyward Spine, I would say, is one of the best weapons for Toma support. Pavonius Lance is one of the better weapons for free-to-play players because it has energy recharge uh, passive. Engulfing Lightning is going to be very good on Toma if you want to have a more into a, a DPS and a support as well. So a very good all-round weapon, but I won't be using the Engulfing Lightning. Otherwise, my bar wouldn't really have any weapon to use. So we're going to be borrowing the Skyward Spine for now. It's a very solid weapon choice for a four-star the new poem is also very good on Toma if you want to have him as a DPS. Or if you want to go with a more free-to-play option, if you got some prototype weapons ready, I think the Kitten Cross Spear can work because it does give you elemental mastery on Toma. So since his elemental burst does deal a bit of pyro damage, elemental mastery can work. And it also gives you a pretty decent passive of providing you a little bit of energy regen as well. Okay so that's weapon let's move into artifacts now toma has some options right here you can either go with four piece emblem fate if you want to focus a little bit more in terms of his burst damage or two piece tenacity can work four piece tenacity will not work because his elemental skill damage is not consistent four piece noblesse is very good for toma if you're missing any support character that doesn't have noblesse four piece already then giving him four piece noblesse is very good other than that if you want to build uh, more of a dps toma then four piece crimson witch is going to work on him as well especially if you're already you know farm for hu tao or building shang ling and you need uh to farm in the crimson witch artifact then it can already give you a few piece that works for toma for now since i don't think i have any four piece artifacts ready of a set then i'll guess i'll go with two piece tenacity and two piece emblem fate i guess i would want a piece that has energy recharge and since we're building support toma i don't think we need a lot of crit rate and crit damage so this piece can work out for us okay i don't think i'll be using my mona for the time being so this piece can help us now what i need is a tenacity piece do i have that left okay i don't have any more tenacity piece but i do have this hp piece on emblem fate so we can also use that as well i think for goblet we can invest a bit in damage in terms of pyro damage bonus and i got a very good pyro damage bonus piece here and then we'll go with that and then the final piece will have to find a tenacity piece as well we do have one but Zhongli is holding it so i guess it's farming time okay let's farm some tenacity piece please any hp piece is fine i haven't fought these bishops in a long time the last time i was here was like farming for eula okay situ sarah's burst and radiance burst right you guys are out 44 seconds that's a very good time complete let's see if we can do like 30 seconds next time 
HP Goblet. Okay. Some stats are really good, but we did get an HP. HP Sands. Nice. So we're going to be doing another run. Hopefully we get a feather. Let's hit that. Okay. Okay. Right. And Kokomi should finish that. And it should be dead. Okay. 41 seconds. Better than our first run. The geofish shops in this domain is very easy. No feather. HP Sands. We'll do one more run. Bow burst. Let's get a record now. Oh, this is going to be tough. Can we get it? Okay. Bow just killed it. 45. No feather again. Attack Goblet. Geo damage bonus. A very decent one at that. HP Goblet. Okay. We're getting a lot of HP today. I don't know if it's because I'm trying to farm for Thomas uh, artifacts. Right. What option do we have now? I guess my only option is going for HP here. If I'm already going for this HP, I might as well get an energy recharge just to focus more on energy recharge for Toma. What option do we have with Emblem Fate? Okay, since this piece seems to be the best, we'll give this to Toma. And I think let us go with energy recharge here because Toma really needs energy recharge as well. I guess we'll go with this. So we have Tenacity and Emblem Fates. Okay, my Toma is basically a fully support Toma. So we got HP here, Attack Feathers as always. I'm running energy recharge for Toma and HP Goblet and HP Circlet. Now, if you wanted a little bit more damage in terms of burst for Toma, then you can swap this out with Pyro Damage. And then you have this as HP and HP Circlet. But then these stats here on artifacts, I would say is good for a support Toma. We got an HP percentage. Nice. I'll take that. We got energy recharge, which, which is good. Let's aim for 200% energy recharge for Toma. HP percentage. Okay, that is totally fine. Insufficient Mora. And I got a lot of attack stats from this circlet. I don't know if I should swap out with another circlet. This also has decent stats. Okay, let's try going with this one. I know that this seems to be a very good piece, but it doesn't really work with Toma. Hopefully, we get a double. We got a double. Nice. And defense on top of that. And we got a little bit of energy recharge, which is good. Okay, not that bad. Let's hit level 16. And I think it should be good for now in terms of Oma's artifacts. We got energy recharge. Nice. It is a very good piece. We're out of money, so I can't really fully upgrade Thomas artifact for now, but I'm pretty sure his stats can be very good. 16% crit rate with 94% rate damage. I don't know how many times he's going to crit though, but he has a lot of energy recharge. Okay, so I'm on Constellation 2 for Toma because I got lucky again in my offline pool, which is good because Toma C2 is probably the better investment for free to play players. It's going to be hard to get a C C6 is very good as it gives your team 15% attack increase whenever you obtain his shield or the shield gets refreshed. So moving on to his talent, let's go through his skills and explanation in terms of his skills. So normal attack, we already know. The scaling is okay. I don't think most of us is going to be using DPS Toma. Now his skills. Whenever you activate his skills, he's going to deal an initial attack that applies pyro to your enemies. And then you also have a shield activated with that as well. So the shield is called Blazing Barrier, which has the following traits. It absorbs pyro damage up to 250% more effectively because Toma's shield is pyro. And when the new Blazing Barrier is obtained, the remaining damage absorption of existing Blazing Barrier will stack and its duration will be refreshed. Okay, so whenever the shields get refreshes, the remaining damage absorption also gets stacked. And there's always the higher the talent, the more damage the shield can absorb. The shield's going to have a base of 8 seconds and the cooldown is 15 seconds. So basically 7 seconds off time. Now, for his burst, he's going to activate what's called the Scorching Oyori, which is similar to how Singcho's burst work if you already have Singcho. So whenever your active characters deals no more attack, they're going to fire out what's called Fiery Collapse that deals AoE pyro damage as well. And whenever you activate your burst, your blazing barrier, which is your shields, also gets triggered. And so that's where the stacks of damage absorption comes in, right? So if the blazing barrier shield time has not complete, and then you activate your burst, that damage absorption of the shield before will also get stacks, and also the duration gets renewed as well. So if you're good with dodging and then shielding with Toma shield, then the shield can potentially be up 
for a very long time or it's going to be constantly be up moving into his passive talent so whenever you have the blazing barrier up or it gets refreshed from both bursts or blazing barriers the shield strength is going to increase as well which is amazing works a bit similar to Zhongli's but I believe that it's not going to be as good as Zhongli's but since we do get shield strength increase that is good so having C1 can help Thoma keep his shield up for a very long time and then in addition passive skills that Thoma have a 20% chance of scoring double catch if you fish in Inazuma so that's a good addition now in terms of his talent prioritization if you're going with support Thoma I don't think you'll be focusing on his normal attack so we can skip that blazing blessing is what i will focus on leveling up first and then crimson or yoroi oh my god i am running out of money already wicked wicked okay finally we can level up our soma's talent so let's do that okay we should be able to get to level six and we should hit level 6. Okay, I don't think I can get to level 8 because I need to level him up in the next ascension, which I'm missing. Ah, 16% crit rate, crit damage. But the only thing we should be focusing on is energy recharge most of the time. So either way, Thoma is good to go. Now let's go into his team build. Thoma, Thoma team build. Okay, Ayaka can go with Chang Yun as well for Cryo Resonance. Obviously, Thoma and Bennett if you want. So this is going to be Melt Team. We can test out Melt Team and see how well Melt is going to be triggered along with Ayaka. Okay, let's test our Melt Team to see how well it can do. First, this is going to be Thoma's shield. So we have our shield up. Let's see how well it does. Few hits. Few hits. Okay, so if you want the shield strength to be up, what we can do is activate his E skills and then activate his burst which would activate uh, another shield strength increase a bit of melt damage there from Ayaka we're seeing that 4k damage and then shield still on reactivate the shields shield's doing pretty well but yeah it does take a bit to get back his sh uh, burst so High level of energy recharge is okay with Soma. Okay, activate burst during his shield so we get more shield stack. Okay, activate his burst again. Yeah, so quite consistent melt damage there with Ayaka. So running Soma is pretty easy. First with melt team, you can go in, get shields up. If you want, you can activate his burst and then set up and then keep going from there. And then once in a while, activate his shields again, and then continue, because you do need to have your shield up constantly, so that can work. If you see his burst up, activate the burst, and then Ayaka should be able to get some melt out of it. You want to keep Thoma's shield up as long as possible. Activate shields again, can we get burst during the shield? It's going to be a bit hard to get consistent shield up without constellation. So without constellation, it's going to be a bit hard to have his shield constantly up. With C1, however, that should be able to help you with keeping Thoma's shield up for a longer amount of time. So not gonna lie, Thoma DPS damage is pretty good. This is like me at talent level 1 and he's already dealing like almost a thousand crit. Another team comp you can run with Thoma is Vaporize. So for Rave Vaporize, I can run with Kokomi. This team is going to be very decent. However, in terms of Okomi actively procting Vaporize, I don't know how much she's going to be able to do it. But we can test out this team. This team for Vaporize is okay. Now, if you want to run Overload, then having Bisho, Beidou, Toma, and Bennett can work. If you're running a free-to-play team, you can have Fisher as DPS, Beidou as sub-DPS, obviously, and Toma, Shield, and Bennett. And those are going to be some of the team composition, mainly. Okay, now let's hop into Thomas' showcase to see how well he does in different team.
So yeah, after testing Soma out, Soma is a very good character, especially for shield support, right? We don't normally have a lot of four star shield support so with addition to Thoma he's going to be a very good support for your team especially if you're having a hard time in the abyss furthermore C0 Thoma is okay but if you have access to C1 Thoma he's gonna be able to help you keep his shield up a lot more consistent and so if you have the ability to get Thoma and also if you're lacking in any shield character I would say try to get Thoma because he's going to be a very good investment and asset for for your whole team for the long run and yeah so that's how i feel about soma if you enjoyed the video guys be sure to subscribe to my channel for more of my genshin impact content and with that this is tom wishing everyone a super day